I made Staff Sergeant recently. So that's exactly what this video is gonna be all about. So I'm gonna touch several things that go into making Staff Sergeant in this video. If I forget anything, feel free to leave a comment down below. Maybe I can answer that, someone else can. Uh, but first I'm gonna start off with testing for Staff Sergeant, how that works. You have to be a senior airman before February 1st of the year that you test. And you usually test between April and June or March and May. That's the testing period every year. So every senior airman that qualifies should go test. As far as I'm aware, it is a requirement. You don't really have a choice. Even the people that say they like don't want to test. So to my knowledge, I was told I had no choice other than to go and test. And I've been getting a lot of questions lately of why would you even go test if you're not planning on being a lifer? And that is my answer to that is that I was told that I had to have a test date and signed up and go test. Now the test is over the PDG and it is also over your jobs CDCs. Uh, for those of you that are interested in what CDCs are, I made a video about that and I also made a video when I did test for Staff Sergeant and I talked more in detail about the requirements of the testing material. Now a lot of people ask why I would try on the test if I don't plan on being a lifer either. And my reasoning for that is that I get paid every two weeks to do my job. Now, part of my job is to care and to try. So when I went and took the test, I was told I had to go take the test. So I'm going to do my job and I'm going to try on the test. Now I didn't study and I didn't put any extra time into this, but I did what I was supposed to and I went and I did my best on the test, which is what they ask you to do. I also only signed a six year contract initially, right when I joined the Air Force, and I'm doing exactly that. I'm doing my six years, I'm doing exactly what they ask me to do, exactly what I signed my name for. So for those six years, I'm going to try and I'm going to do my best. I didn't so much want to make it this year just because so much is going on. So we just recently PCS, we're buying a house right now, I'm learning a new airframe, I'm learning a new base, a new shop. Uh, I have a lot of added responsibility before even making staff, and now that I made staff, I have even more responsibility added to that. And so this year I wasn't extremely passionate about it just because it, frankly, it terrifies me. And there's just so much other stuff going on that I was really worried about making staff because I already feel like overwhelmed. And so that's why I was kind of wanting to make staff next year more than anything. This year I didn't really care for it just because I was trying to like space out the workload throughout several years as opposed to all this year of 2016 being like super crazy. That is one of the reasons that I didn't so much care to make it this year, but I ended up making it and I still have two and a half years left in the Air Force, so that's two and a half years that I'll be doing some sort of NCO responsibilities, for sure a year and a half that I'll be doing NCO responsibilities. Now when you test, it's calculated on a lot of things. It's calculated on time and grade, time in service. It also has to do with your EPRs. Enlisted performance report. Now this is what you could grade it on every single year and it tells like how you are as an airman. Uh, it, it's ranked one through five or it used to be. Now they don't do that. It's similar to a one through five ranking, but it's different. But basically if you got a five rating, then you were like the best of the best. And if you got a four, you were almost the best. And then if you got a three, you were average. I ended up getting a three on this last EPR. And to my knowledge, this last EPR was the only EPR that counted because they just switched everything. So this last EPR was all that counted. So I got 200 points for that EPR. If you get a four, you get 220. And if you get a five, you get 250 which means that whoever got a five and I got a three, they're already 50 points ahead of me. Now I made staff by 4.9 points. So if I would have gotten a four rating, I would have made staff by 24.9 points. And if I would have gotten a five rating this year, I would have made staff by 54.9 point. Like I would have made staff by 54.9 points. But since I got a three, which meant I was an average airman, it was the most competitive area for making staff. So those extra points on your EPR definitely help. My raider actually rated me as a four, uh, but the commander at my last base gave me a three. So what your commander says is what goes in the new EPR system that they've rolled out last year. So I went in with a three being like, well, there's kind of an odds that I will make it and I won't make it. It's gonna be really tough to make it. And like I said, I didn't even study. 
and I still made it. There were 42% that got given staff though, so that's a huge number, it's the biggest number in like 18 years. That had a lot to do with it. Had that percentage been smaller, I probably wouldn't have made it because I was like right on the cusp of that. I made it by five points. So if they would have made it tougher, then I probably wouldn't be talking about this video right now. Now, once you test, you t I tested in May, I think, and you have to wait until August for the results to come out. So the results this year came out on a Thursday, which was August 25th, but this year, unlike some other years, the commanders found out ahead of time so they can congratulate their people before the list actually was released. So some people's commanders didn't congratulate them. Some people had to wait until the list dropped to see their name on it and then that day they got told. But in my squadron and I think several others on Nellis were told ahead of time. So uh, they ended up messing with me. If you guys want to know the actual story when I talked about that, you can click the little exclamation point thing that pops up. That'll be the video when I found out and kind of talked about them surprising me they like were messing with me they were gonna act like I didn't get it so then I thought like I didn't but then they ended up telling me that I did so it was actually pretty cool though that they they like thought enough into it to actually do something for me I found out the day early and I wasn't expecting to make it so it was definitely interesting news but they do release a big list on the 25th they released the list of the, like 16,600 airmen that got promoted to staff sergeant now just because you get this promotion letter right here just because I got this, this doesn't mean that I'm promoting to Staff Sergeant right now. I still don't have this bottom stripe because this is my line number, 13,381. And what that means is that I will be the 13,381st Senior Airman this year to sew on Staff Sergeant. Well, they can't promote 13,000 of us all at once. So what they do is they distribute how many people made it, which was around 16,600. They'll distribute that out over the next 13 months. So from this September, September 1st, until September 1st of next year, they will disperse those out, which is going to be 1,600 every single month. At least the first month is 1,600, and then it might start to taper off a little bit. It fluctuates over time, because 1,600 times by 13 is clearly way over 16,000. So they will just do, they try to keep it about the same, but it'll fluctuate until at the end of year, everybody is promoted that made it in this cycle. So since I'm 13,381, that means that I won't promote for like the next seven, eight, nine months, uh, possibly more if they're doing around 1,200 to 1,600 every single month. It's going to be a while until I promote. So it, I'm guessing it'll be anywhere from like next May until next August of 2017. So I have quite a ways until I actually have to be a staff sergeant. But one thing with making staff sergeant is now I'm a staff sergeant select. So they start treating you like you're going to be a staff sergeant because you have to start being able to fill that role. They don't wait until you make staff sergeant to put those responsibilities on you. They start pushing those responsibilities on you right then. That is going to be how they're going to treat me, like a staff sergeant. So a lot of people are like, well, you know, so on for a while, you got time, but they've already started trying to be like, all right, this is what you're gonna have to do as a staff sergeant. Even though it's gonna be nine months from now that I'm going to be officially a staff sergeant, I need to know that stuff like it's my job before it becomes my job. So after finding out that we made staff the very next day, they had a staff sergeant release party at the base. So all the staff selects had to go there. We all paid $20. Every single person that made staff had to pay $20. And then you get a free drink. And then they also gave you like free food afterwards. So before I can actually sew on staff, I have to go to ALS, which is Airman Leadership School. And Blake's looking forward to that. No. <laughs> so, that is gonna be like pretty stressful because it's it's kind of it's kind of hard to explain. I guess they it's like going through BMT again, but not really going through BMT. It's like a step down from BMT, I guess. You you do a lot of like paperwork and speeches, and you like learn how to properly wear your uniform all over again, and which you should already know. But then you learn to like march again because I haven't marched since BMT, so three and a half years ago. So then you have to do like formation stuff and. Basically, they reinstill all that military bearing that you lost over that time of going to BMT to now. So you have to get all that back and work on that again because they're instilling you to be an NCO or non-commissioned officer for the Air Force. So they want you to have that military bearing back 
because now you're going to fill the role of supervisor. Now, this is something that I've been really, really worried about. This is also another reason why I wanted to wait till next year to make staff is because uh, now that I made staff, they don't have a choice. They have to send me to ALS, like soon-ish. In the next seven months, six months, they'll be sending me to ALS. So I believe that's two months long, a month long. I believe two months long. I'm not for sure. I have no choice. They're going to send me that before I sew on. They're going to send me to ALS. You have to wear like your blues at this. Your graduation is in your dress blues. And you have to wear all your uniforms. You do like PT with them. They, they go to like organized PT, which like my shop doesn't have and I haven't had like the whole time I've been in the Air Force. So it's definitely going to be an interesting experience. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of worried just because there's so much going on right now. So it's like, man, there's a lot of stuff going on. It's a lot of stuff I'm going to learn and memorize. And it's kind of terrifying. Like, I, I'll be honest. Like, I'm completely terrified of this whole new experience and everything that's happening. I feel like I'm not ready. And I don't know if I'd ever feel like I'm ready because that's a huge set. Like, making staff sergeant is a big deal. And it's a lot of responsibility. So I just feel like I have a lot to learn, like too much to learn that I can, like, hold in my brain. So... It, it's pretty overwhelming and scary at the same time. Some people might be like super cocky about it and be like, yeah, no problem, I got this. I'm not like that. I like try to be the best at like, I try to be like the best I can be like in a humble way and not try to like feel like I know everything, but like always feel like I have something to learn. And so with this, I have like a lot to learn. So it's just gonna be an interesting experience. So after ALS, uh, that's when I'll just wait until my sew on day and then I'll start getting assigned like a troop. Once after ALS, I think I'll be able to get a troop even though I'll still be a senior airman since I'm a staff select, they'll give me a troop. That means I have to write his EPR or his enlisted performance report. So I basically have to tell this airman like, hey, this is what we expect of you. This is what the Air Force expects of you. This is what I expect of you. This is how you're doing or this is what you need to do better or this is where you're excelling. We go over all these things with them and that's gonna be hard for me because I've never really had in the three and a half years I've been in, I've never really had like uh, feedbacks or like any of that stuff because Kadena was very hectic and people were constantly like coming and going all the time. So I never really got that like proper supervisor experience. So now I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't even know like how I should be towards an airman. And that's what's really scary for me is that I never really had like that awesome, amazing, perfect supervisor that was my raider. And now I'm gonna have to start raiding on airmen and I almost feel bad because I feel like I wasn't like brought up properly. And now that's going to reflect on my troops is how I feel, which like I'm the last person that would want anything like to happen to other people because of me. So like I take that really personal. And so it's just like I have so much to learn. That's basically where I'm at. But I'm going to get troops that are under me and they'll be my responsibility. And as far as training them, showing them what's right and wrong, uh, teaching them like good characteristics of being just a person in general and being an airman uh, but there's there's definitely a lot to learn about this so uh, this was my video all about making staff sergeant I know I have a lot to learn like I've said several times and I know you guys might have a lot of questions or comments or concerns since I plan on getting out people are like looking down at me for making staff sergeant like it was my fault the Air Force told me I had to test so then I tried and I didn't go out of my way to try, but I tried on the test and then I made it. And that's like something that's really tough for me is because I get looked down at because I don't want to do this my whole life. And I have a lot of other things that I want to do in my life. And as most of you can probably tell, like I, I like to plan things out and think, and I care a lot. And so that's why I have like all these goals in my life that I'm trying to achieve. I just have other things I want to do within those 20 years. And it, it sucks that I get looked down at for that because I signed a six-year contract and that's exactly what I'm doing whether I plan to get out or not uh, if I made the rank it it's because I deserved it because I had the ability to score high enough and I even got a three which meant I was an average airman and I still made the cutoff so for me I feel like I care enough that it paid off like I said I'm scared to make it this year because I feel like I'm not ready uh, but apparently, according to the Air Force and their testing scale, that I'm ready and I made the cutoff. So um, that's like just a tough thing about making this rank too, is that a lot of people feel like you have to do 20 years, but that's a reason I didn't sign a 20 year contract when I joined. There's a reason why you can't do that. There's a reason why you have to reenlist. But then that has a negative reflection on me because I don't plan on doing it for 
20 years. Thanks for watching guys and I appreciate all the support that you guys have given me and uh, the encouragement means a lot especially the people on the Got Love channel that I've been following it. If you guys don't follow our Got Love channel we daily vlog so if you guys want to go check that out you definitely should. Just click the subscribe button. All the stuff well, I guess click the subscribe button on this channel right here, but then in the description below, I also have uh, the link for our Got Love uh, YouTube channel if you guys want to check that out and subscribe as well. So thank you guys for watching. You should give this video a thumbs up.